happy to stand up here and tell all of you about the joys of our job. We all have our own sweet, hysterical, and altogether ridiculous stories. And it would be presumptuous of me to take this opportunity to tell you my stories just because I've been handed a microphone. Just as I don't need to share with you how these kids have changed me, I'm sure you are all acutely aware of the impact these children have made on your own lives. Rather, I'd like to share with you a newfound perspective and a better understanding of what it means to get things done by placing our stories within a broader context. The influence of our work is one of national, global significance. Over the course of my year as a counselor's mentor, I have not only realized the significance, I've come to better understand the nature of change. I firmly believe that real change, meaningful, progressive change, begins at the grassroots. It begins with the education of children, and it begins in communities like Southwest Santa Rosa. A successful education is one that not only equips the students with skills necessary for a meaningful future, but also instills in the student a sense of self-worth and the confidence necessary to resist the dangerous pressures of their circumstances. If more children across this country were successfully educated, I have no doubt that the most devastating problems that weigh on our nation, including violent crime, poverty, obesity, and drug abuse, would be alleviated considerably. Now, a successful education is a difficult accomplishment no matter where you are, but when this difficulty is compounded by instability, poverty, and prevalent gay activity, it seems near impossible. This is where CalSERVs comes in. CalSERVs and other programs like it utilize one of our nation's most valuable resources. A generation of young people willing to dedicate their lives to the education and empowerment of children. We work to offer intentional and structured support for schools that are underfunded and underperforming. We work with children who have had at risk stamped onto their foreheads. Students who struggle for whatever reason to achieve what is expected of them. It is here, with these children, in these communities, where change begins. What is a national decrease in gang violence if it does not occur in cities where gangs are most prevalent? What is an increased literacy rate if English language learners are still rating far below grade level? The efficacy of change in America is measured by its effect in our nation's more, most marginalized communities. It is with this understanding that I will begin my life after college. Tomorrow, I will not only walk away from Room 37 with memories and many tears, but with direction and purpose. CalSERS has taught me how to, better, how to better affect change and what it means to fight for what I believe in. And I can think of no greater lessons with which to walk into this world. Thank you. I wasn't expecting such a large crowd. <laughs> <laughs> so enthusiastic, but you know what kind of goes with the territories? Um, CalSERS came to our school this year. For the previous four years, um, we were <coughs> unserved. I opened the school four years ago, um, and every year through uh, the parent surveys and just generally talking within my community, families would say, when are we going to get an after school program? When are we going to get Cal service? We need Cal service. My son or daughter needs after school help. My son or daughter needs a safe place to go. My son or daughter needs help in reading, writing, or just doing basic homework activities. And I said, soon, soon. And, and it's hard to look at parents and say, soon, when you didn't have a date. Well, last year we were fortunate enough to be gifted with that date. This year we began. And it was fabulous. Um, we have a very enthusiastic group here. And I welcomed them with open arms because our community really needed it. And our students really needed it. Just on a typical conversation with Kristen on a weekly basis, we would touch base about how the individual students were doing, um, what activities were going to go on for that month. And, and that general communication really helped bring CalSERS uh, mentors into our community. Our teachers really appreciated everything that went on for the students. Students that had project scholars and individual tutoring improved significantly. Um, one of the things that we noticed after school is that kids were staying around. Even kids that weren't in college service in the after school program would come to school and kind of hang. Because it was safe. They knew it was monitored by um, good people and with a lot of enthusiasm. 
I've been in education, gosh, 27 years. And in that 27 years, I try to endure that passion and endure the um, excitement for teaching and learning. I look every day at these young mentors, and I'm so appreciative of you and everything you've done. And the mentors who are not at my site, thank you so much, because you might not realize it now. You might get that hug, that thank you from the kid. But 10 years down the line, you're going to run into a kid, and that kid's going to walk up to you and go, I remember you. You were so-and-so at my school, and you did this for me. And that's where it pays off. So, thank you. I remember Gabrielle, Daddy, uh, came to my history class at the beginning of the semester at the Santa Rosa Junior College, and I happened to have a history instructor who's very strong in community work. She believes, and she offers extra credit for a certain amount of hours. Well, I ended up not doing that training because it took me a while to get involved. And um, when I contacted Gabby, got together with her, I was very excited about it. The first day, it, it was actually the second day, the first day, I said, I am a little limited in my math. I have never had a good experience with it, so I'm better off helping first graders. But I think she trusted me a little too much, and we, we tried third graders, and I was looking at her plan. I, mean, I was really afraid, but you know, I didn't want to make them safe, but she took me to the first graders, and I've been wanting to do this for a long time. But when we went in the second day with the first graders, I knew I had to stay in that grade when one of the children said, are you six or seven? <laughs> I said, I'm here. I have to thank uh, Ms. Johnson and Ms. Nagel because they allowed me to come and help every week, and I tried to do it as often as possible. But the thing is that I think I consider myself a dreamer. I've always been a dreamer since I was a little girl, and I'm still a dreamer. But the difference is, are we going to take action in whatever we dream about? I wanted to stop saying, I want to do, and say, I am doing. And that's what CalSERS gave me the opportunity to do this, this semester. And um, it is really, to, to be there with the children, it's really a symbiotic relationship. Because we are trying to help, we give our time, we give our knowledge, we try to show, uh, to be a role model for them. But also, I don't know if you realize in several of the videos, and this, this is how I feel. I get a lot out of that. It makes me feel good. It takes me back to being a child and remember how simple it is to smile. How, how nice does it feel to be innocent? Not, you know, so it's, it's really a symbiotic relationship that I would um, recommend to anybody. And I hope to come back next year, too. So I thank you very much for the opportunity. Like she said, I was fortunate enough to grow up with a mentor. Um, when I was eight years old uh, in school, I was struggling. I was ahead, and no one could help me. My father went to second grade, and my mother was uh, fortunate to go to fourth grade. They were in a rural community in Mexico, and didn't get an opportunity to go to school. So when I was eight, like I said, um, I was struggling. And fortunately enough, I got a mentor. And she helped me all the way through high school. Um, she helped me open new doors, new opportunities, and that's what I wanted to do for all these kids, just like myself. Came with no opportunities. And like, it just takes so much from you, knowing that you were able to fail in school and everything. So being able to help them and help everyone else in their community reach all their goals and their full potential it was something I wanted to do. So fortunately enough, I found this program in which I could help my community and open those doors for those kids. So with words of Gandhi, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. And that is so true, because after three years, I've learned so much about myself, more than I will ever be able to thank Yesenia for. Because with her and all of our mentors, I have learned to push myself to limits I didn't know I could. So thank you guys, and I want to thank every one of my Bulldogs. Thank you. <laughs> thanks to you, you guys have made an impact in my life that I will never, ever, ever be able to repay you guys. So this is not an end, but a new beginning. So remember that guys. Great. Well, listen, uh, I want to begin by thanking you for your service. I really, I really mean that. Uh, 
a couple of the speakers before me said they were surprised by the number of people that were in this room, and so was I, because uh, I've seen many of you around town uh, for quite a few years, and you can't really appreciate the power that is generated by a group of, of um, dedicated people like yourselves until they're all together. And, and I, I would suspect that this is only probably a tip of an iceberg of this movement that's going on in helping our youth and our community. Uh, I, I want to say that I really know firsthand uh, the value of being there for our children. Uh, I know this as uh, somebody who immigrated to this country at the age of three and did not have a support system like we have now for our kids. I know what it's like to be uh, an English learner, to be scared of school and not have that support system. So thank you for what you do. Uh, I spent 30 years in law enforcement here in Santa Rosa, so I also know there uh, the value of supporting and providing that safety net for our kids. Uh, my final two years in law enforcement, I spent uh, managing our city's gang prevention efforts. And, and you are a part of that movement here in Santa Rosa and our community as far as keeping our kids safe and out of gangs. And it starts at a very early, early, early age. So thank you for that effort as well. Uh, one of the things that I saw a lot in the video and I see a lot in our schools is there's no greater joy than putting that smile on a kid's face. I think it's amazing. Uh, and it's amazing to me too to have that, have that experience and having these kids that want to stay after school because they look forward to the activities that can be provided to them. I see that as this great safety net where uh, our hopes are that these kids are at home safe with their parents who obviously have to work harder to support them, but in the morning they're able to hand off their kids to a school system that is supportive of their kids as well, that nurtures them and helps them. And from there, they're able to roll into a program, whether it's yours or anybody else's program after school, uh, to continue that safety net until the parents come home, then we hand them off again. And we do that over and over and over and over again. And at times, we even do it on the weekends when they're, when they're needed. So you're, you're providing a very, very valuable service Thank you for that. Um, I believe that uh, everyone should have a passion, uh, and, and I think you have it in, in a purpose, and that is you know, helping kids. Uh, don't let that go. Uh, I think it's something that will continue to grow. Uh, the other thing, and I, and I heard it mentioned by somebody before too, is dreaming, and that is teaching our kids to dream. Uh, and I believe that in order for your wildest dreams to come true, you first have to have wild dreams. And I think you are helping these kids to, to learn that they can dream, to really learn that they have so much uh, potential, so much that they can be giving back to their community as they go as well. Because you are their mentors, and I, and I appreciate you for that. So uh, I'll keep it short. And I like the smile. <laughs> this is a great smile. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for what you do. And I can't tell you how important it is for me uh, as a community leader to see this kind of movement, to know that there are so many people like yourselves out there that are supporting your kids. So thank you very much for what you do.